Hi guys and welcome to this lesson and indeed this section. So this lesson and those to follow at the beginning of the end of our orbit application. We've come an incredibly long way and now we're going to start adding a social element to our application by allowing users to follow other users and therefore seeing the feedback that they leave for one another. This will mean that a user's homepage will have the ability to display the status feeds or updates from another user. The first thing we need to do to implement following is to construct a data model. Straight off the bat, we might think has many could work for us as it did in previous lessons. A user has many followed users and has many followers. However, there is a problem with this as we'll discover later. The solution is to use has many colon true, T-H-R-O-U-G-H as opposed to T-R-U-E. To begin, let's create a new topic branch. So here I am in my IDE, and as you can see, I have it all clean. So git checkout hyphen B, what are we calling this? Well, we're gonna start following users, so follow hyphen users. Switch to a new branch. Now, before we go any further, let's discuss for a moment the process of following a user. So my name is Tony, and let's imagine for a moment that your name is Frank. I follow Frank, and Frank follows Tony. So now I am a follower, and I am followed. So I follow Frank, and I am followed by Frank. In previous lessons, we've seen and used the Rails default pluralization convention. This convention would dictate that the set of all users following a given user is that user's followers. So franks.followers is an array of those users. The reverse of this process or train of thought does not work. It's not that easy to grasp. By default, the set of all followed users would be called the followeds, which sounds terrible like some weird sci-fi show. So we're going to use the Twitter method and name them following. I am following 100 users and I have 50 followers. To do this, we will have a corresponding Tony.following array. Bit of a mind bender, but we have Franks.followers, so Frank's followers, which will be an array of all his followers, and Tony.following, which will be an array of everybody who I follow. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let's think about what we have to do in the context of the REST architecture that we have seen in previous lessons. As we know, REST involves resources that are created and destroyed. Consider when a user follows another user, is something being created? And when a user unfollows another user, is something being destroyed? With this train of thought, we see that our application should either create or destroy a relationship between two users. A user has many relationships and has many following or followers through these relationships. Now, as if what I've just said wasn't enough to already break your brain, there is one more detail we need to consider. The relationships in our application will be asymmetric, meaning they only go one way. I can follow you without you following me. To tell these two cases apart, we're going to use the terminology of active and passive. If I follow you, I have an active relationship with you. If you do not follow me in return, then you have a passive relationship with me. Easy. We'll first focus our attention on active relationships to generate a list of followed users. As each followed user is uniquely identified by a followed ID, we could convert following to an active relationship table, which omits the user details. We could then use the followed ID to retrieve the followed user from the user's table. We'll get a better idea of how all this works when we start getting into the code. And I understand that it's a little bit difficult to imagine at the moment or a little bit difficult to picture at the moment. But if it is, re-listen to this piece of the lesson and keep moving forward. Eventually it will make sense. So our database is going to contain tables for both active and passive relationships. So we'll give it a nice generic name like relationship and have a corresponding relationship model. Let's create the migration now using the following code. So in our terminal, Rails, generate model 
relationships or relationship I should just say singular with a capital or then we have follower f o l l o w e or underscore id it's going to be an integer and we're going to have followed underscore id which is also going to be an integer hit enter on that we're going to be finding relationships by follower id and followed id so we'll add an index on each column for efficiency and to do this go to db migrate and the relationships table we've just created or the relationships file we've just created so left hand side db migrate here we are the migration file after timestamps here on line 8 hit enter and say add underscore index colon relationships comma space follower underscore id same again add index relationships followed underscore id oh, don't forget the colon like i just did there at the beginning there we go finally add index relationships comma square brackets colon follower comma colon followed comma unique true save that the last line of our code here is a multiple key index that enforces uniqueness on follower id and followed id pairs this ensures that a user can't follow another user more than once to create the relationship table run rails db migrate There we go. Perfect. Okay, guys, that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next.